Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids and this is my continued coverage of the brand new Canon EOS 550D. Now if you didn't see my unboxing video, check it out on the Geekanoids channel now. In this video, I'll be giving you a tour of this superb digital SLR camera. And what Canon have released in this camera is a whole host of pro level specifications and features in a consumer orientated package. Before I give you a tour around the camera, let's give you a quick rundown on the specs. You get an 18 megapixel sensor, Digic 4 processor, 3.7 frames per second shooting, full 1920 by 1080 p HD movies, a 3 inch 3.2 format screen with 1040k resolution, an external mic socket and that's just touching on the main features. So let's get this video underway and give you a look around this absolutely superb camera. So we start just with the body itself. And we'll start with the back of the camera. Now on the back of the camera we've got a menu button here. We've also got a display button for controlling the various display settings on the screen. And here's the viewfinder eyepiece. This gives you approximately a 95% view. So what you see in the actual viewfinder is roughly 95% of what you're actually capturing a photo. This is the dioptric adjustment knob. This allows you to uh, get good focus through the eyepiece and adjust it for your eyes. Perhaps if you wear glasses you might need to adjust this. Here we've got the live view uh, shooting or movie shooting button. Now if you're in movie shooting mode then this stops and starts the video recording. If you're taking photographs then this flips up the mirror and gives you a live view. Uh, similar to what you've been used to with a compact camera. Moving across here, we've got uh, an FE lock button and also an index reduce button. So if you're viewing back something on the screen, then this allows you to zoom out as well. This one here acts as an AF point selection button and also a magnify button. So again, depending on what mode you're in, determines the function of it. Then just moving down here, we've got an aperture exposure compensation button. This one here is a quick select button and it allows you to gain quick access to some of the menu options in the menu. I'll be showing you that in a, a later video when I take you for a tour through the various menu options. This also acts as a direct print button as well. And then moving further down, we've got a speaker here for playing back the sound that you may well have captured during um, a movie recording. These buttons here are very self-explanatory. This one here is the white balance select button. Then this one here is the AF mode selection button for controlling various autofocus modes. This one here is a picture style select button. Uh, this allows you to control various uh, picture styles that are preset into the camera. This one here allows you to control uh, continuous shooting mode or the drive modes and also set a self timer. And this middle button here is like an enter button. It allows you to actually set uh, the menu selection that you've made. Just underneath here, we've got a playback button for gaining you access to what you've actually taken photos of. So you can play them back on this lovely three inch screen. And then this last one here has been slightly recessed to uh, prevent accidental uh, deletion, this is the trash can button which allows you to delete the pictures you've taken. Moving around onto this side of the camera, we've got a card slot which you open like so, and this is where you're going to put your SD, SDHC, or SDXC memory cards. Moving around to the front of the camera, now, the front of the camera is pretty clear. What we do have here is the shutter button, which is just sort of on the top, but also angled to the front of the camera as well. And then uh, here we have the red eye reduction lamp, which is just tucked away in here. This is the remote control sensor, so if you're uh, 
using a remote control to activate the shutter. This is the sensor that picks that up. Then moving around slightly to this uh, angle on the camera, here we have uh, the little flash pop-up switch here to control the flash. This one here is a, a depth of field preview button. So uh, through the screen or the viewfinder you can push this and it will give you an indication on your depth of field. This one here is the lens release button. You push this in to rotate the lens and remove it from the camera. Now I'm not going to show you the lens in great detail here because you may well have just purchased the body only. But if you have purchased the 18 to 55 millimeter kit, this is what the lens looks like. We've got a couple of controls on the lens for autofocus and manual focus, and also switching the image stabilizer on and off. Now, image stabilization is done in the lens, so it's not in the camera body. So you only get image stabilization if you buy an IS lens. Now, back to the camera body itself. Just here, just above the EOS 550D logo, you've got a microphone pickup. And then round on this side of the camera, we've got a little flap which you can undo to reveal a microphone socket, remote cable release, AV out and USB connection and also a mini HDMI connector on the bottom here. And then this pushes back into place uh, so you've got a nice seal there, it's not weather tight but it does feel that it does actually fit in there quite nicely. I'll just show you that flash button once more. You can actually push it to force the flash up. It's sort of a motorized sound as the flash pops up. So a nice responsive uh, flash there. And then back to the top of the camera. And you've got no LCD display on the top of the camera. That's what sets this apart from uh, the perhaps the, the 50D and the further up in the range on Canon Digital SLR. So no no display on the top, all of your information is on this screen on the back. But what you basically got on the top is two metal loops built into the body here. This is where you're going to put your camera strap. We've also got an accessory shoe here for things like flashes. And then we've got uh, a control dial here, and this is used for flicking through your menu uh, selections. And then we've got a direct ISO button here. Which so if you if you push this down and then rotate this control wheel, then you can change the ISO setting. We've also got the on-off switch, which flanks the mode controls, and then this mode control dial is where you're going to do a lot of your work with 550D. And what this basically gives you uh, access to is various modes on the camera such as manual, aperture priority, shutter priority, program mode, creative auto mode, uh, we've got a fully auto mode and then you've got some scene modes around here including macro photography and sports and then all the way around takes you around to that movie mode. Now whilst in movie mode you'll have heard the mirror actually come up in the camera and if I pop this lens cap off you can see the screen is actually giving me a live view of the um, subject that I'm trying to take the video of. So let's give you a look at that screen actually. This is this 3 inch 1040k screen, so over a million pixels on this screen. Really high resolution, it's also a 3.2 format, so it's absolutely filled top to bottom, no black bars when you're looking at pictures, and really marvellous colour rendition on that screen. Well, the Canon EOS 550D is really something special. Worth noting that this is also known as the Rebel T2i in other parts of the world. It's available body only in the UK for £799, or with the kit lens, the 18-55 to you can see on it now, it's going to set you back £899. I got mine from Park Cameras, so a big thank you to them for sorting me out one of the first units to come into stock in the UK. Well that's it for this video. Check back on the Geek and Noise channel soon for a walk through the menus of this superb camera plus another video showing you the photo and video performance. This video review is sponsored by Academy Class, the UK's premier creative IT training centre, authorised by Adobe, Apple and Autodesk.